is the um, uh, timing of the class uh, fr Thursday or uh, yeah, Friday. Friday is unique. Uh, it gives um, uh, ten thirty as the time. Uh, today is double valued. Uh, there is a slot at uh, ten. There is a slot at two. Uh, only one of those would be operational. Uh, so it uh, depends uh, on. Uh, I don't have any particular uh, 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 one way or another. Uh, likes or dislikes so um, uh, it depends entirely on uh, whatever is a more convenient time for a majority of you uh, we will settle for that so if you want this class at 10 we will have it at 10 if you want it at 2 we will have it at 2 Friday is obviously uh, uniquely 11.30. Sir, I guess 10 is better. Fine. I mean, uh, whatever. I mean, your uh, is we, we. This can only be one class, and uh, so uh, it, I mean, there won't be two classes uh, on uh, Tuesday. So if it is ten, fine. I mean, it's uh, we. Separate. Yes, sir. Ten is fine, sir. Okay, great. Ten. So there won't be anything at two o'clock. So all right. So let's get started. The what we will be um, uh, discussing is huh? yeah. Huh. recording in progress. Um, so, uh, what we will be talking out, uh, about in this uh, semester. Uh, is um, systems uh, with uh, interactions and uh, consequently uh, it will be, I mean, uh, al almost everything we'll be looking at will have to do with interactions between particles. And uh, so we get started with a real gas which has uh, interaction between particles. So, real, real gas as opposed to the ideal gas where gas pa particles were moving around without any interaction except uh, collisions which had to be there. Uh, but uh, apart from uh, collisions, uh, these were without the collisions, they would not equilibrate. So uh, collisions had to be there. And um, uh, without it, uh, they are um, uh, moving around uh, in a, uh, without any interaction. So that was real gases have interaction. So real gases have a, what kind of interaction? First thing that we will um, uh, uh, do is simplify. So interaction. Simplify in by taking only two body interactions. So that means particle I and particle J interact with no reference to particle. Hello, sir. sir, one of our friend is yeah, in waiting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, we'll have a uh, two body interaction essentially uh, means that uh, I have uh, a particle I and a particle J interacting with each other regardless of 
the interaction is not modified by the presence of a third particle, where, let's say K. So this K has no effect on the interaction between I and J. Similarly, the interaction between I and K is not affected by the presence of this and so on and so forth. So that is what is meant by a two-body interaction. K plays no role in the interaction between I and J. J plays no role in the interaction between I and K. And J, uh, I plays no role in the interaction between K and J. So it is the first simplification two-body interaction. So what um, uh, does that uh, mean? Uh, why and when can I simplify? So simplifications first, uh, ideal gas, which has no interaction, is essentially a dilute gas. The <coughs> dilute um, uh, because all these interactions between neutral uh, atoms or molecules so can only be uh, the only interaction is beca because of uh, electrical forces. So electrical forces are the only things which I would give you and one over r squared, these are all neutral atoms. So one over r squared is absent. So it has to be a uh, dipolar interaction between uh, the two, which can lead to uh, attractive uh, interaction, and that attractive interaction uh, falls off. So two-body interaction, attractive origin is dipole, Dipolar interaction is the origin, and uh, the uh, fall off is the potential falls off, potential V of R i j, attractive potential falls off as one over R i j to the power six. So that's the uh, uh, two body interaction. And what you can, you can imagine that when the gas is very, uh, dilute and particles are very far away from each other, one over R to the power six cannot have a role. So, all right, so very dilute gas, it should be I, uh, uh, PV equal to NKT. Now you make it a little more dense. And what you are going to see that these uh, uh, molecules can come reasonably close so that you can have the uh, uh, first correction, which comes essentially from the dipolar interaction. And this goes, uh, which uh, uh, has a potential going off as one over R to the power six. If you now increase the density some more, you are going to see other uh, larger, I mean, things which fall off faster coming into the um, uh, uh, game. And therefore, what you can imagine is that pressure that you get, the ideal gas pressure was NKT. Then there would be a term which is proportional to N squared and then there would be n cubed and so on. And what we are after is really the n squared term. So that's the two body interactions can only buy us the uh, n, square, uh, n squared term cannot get us any of these. So that's the attractive part of the interaction. The particles, these uh, are molecules, have a finite radius, let's say <coughs> some whatever uh, capital R. And therefore, the, the centers, if they come close enough, they are going to scatter off each other. So uh, the Ultimate scattering is uh, elastic scattering where it hits and gets off, essentially. 
uh, and that is when the center separation is 2R, which is the diameter of the um, uh, sphere. So if I imagine the molecules as spherical, then uh, there is going to be a repulsive interaction and that repulsive interaction uh, uh, would uh, uh, be um, operational at uh, scales which are of the order of molecular diameter. And to the first approximation, what it says is that, look, uh, if I have this volume V, which we are uh, in which the gas is enclosed, then for every molecule, each molecule over here uh, inside, it is, it has, if they were point particles, they would be accessing the whole V. But if you give them a radius R, then there is this, each of them is going to avoid this cannot get into a diameter, I mean, a sphere which looks like this over here, cannot get into this sphere over here, this sphere, this sphere, and so on. So there would be n minus 1 times 4 thirds pi d cubed. This volume is inaccessible uh, to this molecule over here, particular molecule that I'm talking about. It's the same for each of these molecules. This n is 10 to the power 20. So it is n times 4 by 3 pi d cubed. And that, if you call it some b, then the accessible volume, accessible volume, is V minus B. And even if I were to know nothing about the fact that there are interactions, if I just assume elastic collisions keeps them away from each other, the equation of state would have to become P times V minus B equal to NKT. So this is just a repulsive force treated with uh, uh, almost in a, in a very ham-handed fashion. And uh, what you are saying is that there is an excluded volume and uh, you see only um, uh, each molecule can access only uh, an uh, uh, amount of volume, which is V minus B. B is, I mean, has to be of order, it has to be a macroscopic quantity. So it is of order N. So there is a macroscopic quantity here. There is a macroscopic quantity over here. So it is uh, V minus B is, um, uh, uh, B is that. And if you write this as P equal to NKT, and V minus B, obviously B is small because this D, which is of the order of some angstroms, and uh, therefore uh, this is going to be a small number, and you can uh, expand NKT1 plus B by V plus uh, B squared by V squared, and so on. So, uh, sorry, <clears throat> B squared by B squared and so on. So this is the first correction uh, uh, which you see. Uh, this is equal to NKT. And now over here, it is one plus the B is proportional to N. So this is some small number times n, and similarly, this is going to be some small number times this. So this already, this repulsive interaction, uh, which excludes uh, the uh, accessible volume, a part of the accessible volume, gives you an expansion 
which is of this kind and that first term in that expansion is this uh, uh, small coefficient of small n is the diam the volume of the excluded sphere four thirds pi d cubed. So, sir, one of our friend is waiting. What? One of our friend is waiting, sir. Oh, ah, sure. Good, good ball. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the so you see that this repulsive force picks up, gives you a part of the n square. It also gives the n cubed and so on and so forth. And as I said, our focus would be entirely on the n square term uh, simply because uh, the attractive part is a far more difficult calculation. So this is the repulsive part of it. This kind of an expansion is generally known as a virial expansion. The pressure expanded in terms of the uh, number density is called a virial expansion. And the first term in the virial is the ideal gas law. And what we want to do is concentrate on the second term of the virial and we have the repulsive contribution to it, which is being modeled as a, a sphere of exclusion. So you, uh, some volume is um, not accessible to a given molecule. And so you uh, write uh, the uh, correction as V minus B. And B is the excluded volume. So very good, this is the easy part of it. The complicated part is the attractive business and that will require a real calculation. So that's what we... Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, why this is N minus one four pi DQ? Can you please repeat? What? N, uh, N minus one four pi DQ. When in uh, inaccessible volume. Uh, in my, if a particular, I mean, you are asking why have I, why do I have N minus one here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because there are N particles. And if I focus on a particular particle over here, then the amount, if this was a point particle, it would be able to see the entire volume V or if all parts of this volume V would be accessible to it. But now what is accessible is uh, each, you cannot come within this sphere of radius uh, D, so four thirds. So this one kills out one factor of this, this second factor, third factor, fourth factor, and so finally n minus one, because that's the, I mean, you, you are looking at one particular and that is excluded by n minus one. So n minus one times four thirds, but n minus one, n is 10 to the power 20, so nobody really cares. So it is n minus one is it. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Huh? So, So potential between, I mean, when I have uh, two interacting gas molecules, neutral, gas molecules, 
what's the potential v of r12 so this is particle 1 and particle 2 question is how do you model the v of r12 the one of the better known models is uh, the so called leonard jones potential which is v0 that's a constant carrying the dimension of the energy times r0 which is a number which is of the order of the diameter divided by r to the power 12 that is the repulsive very short range repulsive and here the attractive part which is the um, standard dipole dipole term and this is uh, r0 over r uh, there could be a constant over here uh, which i'm uh, not going to worry about <coughs> so r0 over r to the power 12 r0 so uh, 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 it's uh, known as a 612 potential or uh, Leonard Jones potential. This is the repulsive part which I have already taken into account. So I have to worry about the part which comes from over here, which is the attractive uh, force. And uh, the, um, uh, so we have to do uh, stat met with this, we are, with this interaction term over here. And for, we'll keep it as V of R12 for a while. And when we actually do the calculation, we'll focus on this part. Of it. So I have to write down the partition function. So the partition function Z is, integral over uh, d3 so i have n particles so it is d3p2 up to d3pn and then it is d3r1 to d3rn and then it is e to the power pi square over 2m and uh, that's the uh, uh, kt uh, which is the kinetic energy and then here is minus v r12 divided by uh, v r i j summed over all pairs i j divided by k so e to the power exponential uh, in, uh, minus e over kt E is P square over 2M plus the potential, which is so the energy expression is uh, Vij, uh, which is uh, this. Uh, this is Rij here, Rij over here. And this has to be summed over all pairs Ij. So this is summed over all pairs ij and that is the potential energy part of the energy so the energy total energy is total kinetic energy which is this part over here and then the potential energy which is that part over there so this uh, is to be divided by h to the power 3n which takes care of my dimension business so this is equal to uh, uh, the part over here uh, uh, is uh, answer which you are familiar with 2 pi mkt over h square raised to the power 3n by 2. So that's uh, uh, what uh, uh, comes from uh, these integrations over here and now the part over here which we have to worry about d to r n e to the power minus pair sum v of r i j divided by so that's where we are all right so what do i do 
the I mean, obviously, at this point, one is stuck. Uh, you can't do this in T. So fine. Uh, but now, what kind of an interaction is this? This is uh, electromagnetic interaction. So coupling constants of electromagnetic interaction are of the order of one over hundred. So it. it the good thing about this is that the numerically these potentials are very weak and therefore I would be able to do a perturbation expansion. So V i j electromagnetic origin V i j and uh, uh, origin is uh, electromagnetic, so which is weak, order 10 to the power minus 2 in uh, dimensionless terms, and therefore allows perturbation expansion. So perturbation expansion means that I am going to write this as 2 pi m k t over h squared to the power 3n by 3n by 2 integral d3 r1 to d3 r n 1 minus summation over all pairs v r i j over k t plus higher order terms. 2Vs, 3Vs, and so on. Sir, can you explain why this uh, order 10 to the power minus 2, how that number is coming? Pardon? What is? Where, how is? So, weak uh, order 10 to the power minus 2, you have written the electromagnetic uh, origin is very weak. So, how that number is coming? Uh, 10 to the power minus 2 order of? Uh, that is the fine structure constant 1 over 130. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so uh, that that that's um, uh, that. Uh, and now, question is, how do I um, uh, handle that? So all right. 2 pi m k t over h squared to the power 3 n by 2. The first term is just v to the power n. So 1 into this, all these r's uh, giving you um, uh, uh, an uh, integral of v. So independent of each other and then this. Now comes the second term. Second term is V of R12 plus V of R13 plus uh, then let's say V of R35 and so on. So how many terms over here? The number of terms in this sum is NC2. So it is n, n into n minus 1 by 2. So the number of terms is n squared over 2. All right. So I have n squared over 2 terms over there. Now, each term of the, when I do this integral, uh, all right, let me uh, write one. Suppose you are going to do this with V R12. So I have a sum R12 plus R13 and so on. So now you, I want to do this integral over here. So well, all these apart from D3 R1 and D3 R2, the others are simply going to give me a total volume V. So that is going to be V times uh, to the power n minus 2 d3 r1 d3 r2 v12 
right? So that's the uh, uh, integral uh, over there. So if I look sir, at some of the students are waiting, sir. So uh, if I uh, I'm looking at this integral then, and it is v to the power everything except r1 and r2 is a free integration, which gives me the uh, volume. So that is v to the power n minus 2, n minus 2 over here. And then it is uh, uh, d3r1, d3r2, v12. So that is the um, uh, final uh, step that one needs to take. I need to calculate uh, that. Let's see. I'll get rid of. All right. So uh, this is, so it's up to here. And uh, the first term has given me v to the power n. And now it is the second term, which is uh, minus, minus, and then it is n square over 2. And then it is d3r1, d3r2 and v12. So that is this. So this is what so <clears throat> this is this part is trying to evaluate this which is different. So let let me just ma uh, make sure uh, that uh, you are I have started evaluating the partition function n particle system that is the expression this is the uh, integral um, uh, over what and that's a, and then it is e to the power minus the energy over kt kinetic energy potential energy potential energy is a uh, two body interaction so the kinetic energy part integrates out to give you this it is the potential energy which I have to do, d3r1, this part over here. It is e to the power minus the position dependent potential. And the, then because it is uh, electromagnetic uh, interaction and therefore weak, I can expand it as 1 minus expansion uh, ij, v to the power rij plus kt plus one half two factors of this divided by kt squared and so on. Now there are, so now I want to evaluate this and uh, uh, this integ first integral simply gives me this v to the power n. So then when it comes to this, I have to integrate over, this is a sum over pairs. So it is r1 to this. How many pairs? Now, number of pairs is n into n minus 1 by 2, which is like n square over 2. So that is the factor n square over 2. And then I need to multiply by just one pair, which let me write as d3, 1, d3, 2. And then it is this. And uh, the rest of it here was v to the power n minus 2. Is that. So this factor over here, v to the power n minus 2, n square over 2, the number of terms, and then the single term is d3r1, d3r2, v12 over k. So that's that. So that is where we are. And uh, therefore, this z is equal to 2 to the power pi m k t over h square 
to the power 3n by 2 v to the power n 1 minus n square over v square n square over v square and this potential uh, is this uh, uh, the uh, attractive part of the Leonard Jones potential. So V, let me, R2 is equal to V0, that carries the dimension of the thing. And then it was uh, R0 over R12 uh, divided to the power 12 minus R0 over R12 to the power 6. So this was the hardcore repulsion which we took into account by changing V to V minus B and what the calculation is for this attractive term over here which is minus that part. So the part that I'm talking about the potential is for which the calculation is being done features the attractive one which is V12. So it is 1 over n square over v square and then there is v0 by kt and now there is <coughs> that's that minus sign and then it is d3 r1 d3 r2 and there is uh, now the minus sign which is going to come from here which is minus sorry, R0 by R12 to the power 6, that is the integer. Uh, so, sir, there should uh, be a, uh, there should be a, a 2 in the denominator of the n square by v square term. Ah, uh, 2. Yes, right, you are right. There has to be a 2. Sure, there was a 2 and now it's back here. Good. So we are dropping the uh, repulsive term. No? What is the? So we are dropping the uh, one by r to the power twelve term. No, for, for because the because I have because already taken it. Uh -huh. Because I have already taken that into account in the uh, sh uh, short range repulsion. Ha, yes. Sir. By using the excluded volume. Achha, yes, sir. Yes. So the calculation. The part which was taken care of in the excluded volume, the calculation is only for the attractive um, uh, part. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, this becomes, so now D3 R1, D3 R2 is D3 R1, 2, D3 RCM. So the RCM integrates to give you one more uh, uh, factor of volume. So this is equal to 2 pi mkt over h squared to the power 3n by 2 v to the power n 1 minus n squared over 2v. That is the volume coming from over here v0 by kt d3 r12 and the minus and minus becomes a plus r0 r12 to the power 6. All right. So <clears throat> this is, the, so I want to focus on this. It is 4 pi uh, integral r12 squared r0 over r12 to the power 6 d r12. How, uh, what is the range of integration? The range of integration has to be to where this essentially when r12 is the small, closest ap uh, approach is r12 equal to uh, the diameter d so uh, uh, and therefore this integral over here is going to run from d uh, the diameter of the sphere uh, to um, uh, infinity and therefore uh, it is r0 
so which is a number again of the order of the diameter and the cutoff is also of the order of the diameter so this is 4 pi and uh, here is r12 to the power 4 so that gives you a 3 and then you have uh, r0 uh, to the power 3 so that's the uh, uh, the logic for uh, r0 is a number of the order of diameter the cutoff is something of the order of diameter. So you just put it at R0. R0 is how far you can go over here. And that's that. Uh, you, <coughs> you can uh, make life uh, uh, if you want to argue about um, uh, being uh, somewhat more fastidious about it. Then you can plot up this potential. Uh, the uh, this uh, the Leonard Jones potential. The Leonard Jones potential is going to look like this. So that is the one over R one two to the power twelve, and here is the minus one over R one two to the power six, and they give you a minimum. So this is the minimum. Uh, the minimum is at uh, R12 equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6 or so on. If I had defined the potential uh, with a 2 in front of one of the terms, I would get 1. So effectively, you are this minimum over here is the closest approach. And therefore, I mean, it is a number of the, that, that that's... Uh, all num or numbers of order unity are uh, not exactly uh, being um, uh, followed honestly, um, which is quite all right because your potential uh, leaves a lot to be desired. So uh, uh, thereafter, uh, quibbling about uh, uh, a number, whether it has to be 1 or 1.2, uh, is not very useful. So that's the logic of these things. Uh, that, uh, well, that's what always... Uh, I mean, th these are things that you need to know. I mean, people do it all the time. Uh, and there is, I mean, good reason why uh, they do it. And uh, that's... So this is, I mean, you... Uh, so it becomes 2 pi mkt over h square. Uh, to the power 3n over 2, v to the power n, 1 plus n square over 2v, v0 over kt times r0 q. Dimensionally correct because this is dimensionless, R0 cube takes away the dimension of the volume over here. So uh, where is my 4 pi over 3? So that should have been 3 over here and 2 pi here, right? So 2 pi over 3, That uh, so n square over v. But you have to appreciate also the amount of violence that is going on if you uh, are sort of going to be finicky about it. This term over here, n over v, uh, is all right. I mean, it's a number density. But then you are faced with a number which is like 10 to the n, which is like 10 to the power 20. And anybody would tell you that this Perturbation theory is worse than stupid because you have a correction term which has a n floating, which is 10 to the power 23. But that is not, I mean, th th these things don't bother people. They don't bother people because here is a number, R0, which is probably 10 to the power minus 7. So, all right, here you have 10 to the power minus 21, and here you have, uh, uh, which is uh, 
10 to the power 20. So at the end of the day, a number of order unity. It looks like violence because N everybody appreciates is huge, but it is not really a violence because there is this chap over here, which is extremely small and therefore takes care of it. They, 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 I mean, um, you, uh, they, this, this is important because the, uh, there, there is always the, this kind of expansion. Uh, the validity of it can always be challenged. You are playing with fire. Something was of the something raised to the power n, and you are happily uh, <coughs> something which looks like uh, something of power n. And you are merrily expanding the next term would be n to the power 4 and you are not bothered. But there is reason not to be bothered because these numbers are also very small. Generally, when they are dimensionless numbers, you are more comfortable. But over here, uh, the uh, thing is that uh, you are uh, dealing with uh, dimensional numbers. And because R0 um, uh, has a dimension and uh, you are um, uh, looking at this, uh, the dimension less is R0 uh, cubed over V. And the, you have to sort of say that it is like N to the power minus two, although N does not appear over there. But R0 turns out is like n to the power minus one. So anyway, I mean, uh, that, that's the um, uh, business. And I have got my uh, uh, perturbation expansion correct to the lowest order in this V0 over here. So now what? So now what uh, uh, that is going uh, I have a Hey, sure, that. go ahead. Sir, uh, one, uh, minute. There's one, the... one, one minute, one minute. Yes. Let me erase this stuff and then uh, uh, listen. Huh. Yes. Sir, there's the Boltzmann constant uh, in the denominator 10 to the power minus 28. So, would that affect the term perturbation which you call? Uh, I, I mean, uh, the, it, uh, my problem is that I, your words are coming out jumbled at my end. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, Let me try once again. There's the Boltzmann constant in the denominator because of which uh, the term might uh, blow up. Um, uh, look, um, it's... Uh, I, I, I can't, I, 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 what I'll do is, let me, I mean, uh, 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 let me repeat the logic uh, uh, again, if it does not satisfy, uh, you are worried about this term, is that what I get? Are you, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let me re repeat the logic about this. And then um, uh, if it does not, uh, uh, if you are still troubled, uh, best is send me a mail and I will respond because I'm just not able to, the sound is not coming out right. So I'm not really catching the words. But uh, let me try and re are, are you comfortable? Uh, yes and no will. Uh, do. Are you comfortable with this whole expression? Yes, sir. All right. Now the point is that I want to say. I mean, I have done this as a perturbation exercise and by looking at it, I'm bothered because N over V, see N over V is the number density, it is of order unity. I'm not bothered. V0 over KT is the electromagnetic, I mean, the uh, energy scale of the interaction with the, and that is actually what I'm perturbing in. And therefore, that is uh, as uh, of the electromagnetic coupling constant order. So it's like e squared over hc, which is uh, uh, one over one. Th so that is my small parameter of the expansion. But that is being multiplied by 
n over v, which is of order unity, no quarrel with that, but then there is n and there is r0 cubed. And the point is, on the face of it, this looks bad because I, here is a number and here is something which is, uh, it's bad in two different ways. It's bad in perturbation theoretic uh, uh, business that it looks like I have a large number over here, which I know to be large, something of the order of 10 to the power 20. And there is this, which I, uh, which is, I mean, not a number that uh, uh, you often, you, uh, somebody could argue that it's small. Uh, it's not so small. But here is something which everybody will agree with. It. So on the face of it, it looks bad. That's number one. The other is uh, uh, the fact that there is a n over here is uh, raises question about also extensive, intensive, and things like that. So there is an issue with that, which we will um, uh, handle in a minute. But right now, what we are, I'm saying is that, look, this R0 is some 10 uh, or uh, angstrom or uh, smaller. And uh, therefore, I mean, certainly uh, uh, 10 angstrom would mean, so if it is 10 angstrom, it is 10 to the power minus seven centimeters. So you are looking at something which is 10 to the power minus 21, and here is 10 to the power 20. So uh, these are compensatory um, um, uh, things. Another way of, uh, they, they compensate each other. Another way of saying the same thing is that, look, uh, if I have these, uh, 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 if this R0 is roughly the diameter of the sphere over here, because the cutoff has to be the smallest distance between the center has to be the diameter. So if it is the diameter, which is the, lowest uh, thing over here, then the diameter has to be proportional uh, to the inverse of the number of particles that I have uh, in this. So for a given volume, it is proportional uh, to the, uh, 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 or what that is one, R, the volume R zero cubed, which is the diameter of this sort of, uh, has to be of the uh, order of this whole V, which is uh, itself is of the order of N. So what one is saying is that R zero cube times V is a number of order unity, and therefore R zero cubed is like one over the volume in which you are sitting, and therefore in effect, this is of the same order of magnitude as this. So that, therefore, the perturbation theory is not really bad in that sense. So that, that, that is what uh, uh, I was after. The other thing is, what? yeah, uh, Ruksha? Yeah, uh, so. I got it, got it. All right, good. So uh, uh, the other thing is, I have an N sitting there. That's no, not fair because the question is, uh, I mean, this is one. I mean, there is V to the power N sitting over here and uh, you better not have uh, uh, one plus N coming over here. The answer to that is that, look, I mean, the, these things have to be Number one, you are not calculating a physical quantity. So you better hold on, you can hold on till you have actually calculated the pressure and see whether it is uh, the extensivity, intensivity, all these things are right or not. The other is that, look, if I want to be um, uh, 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 sort of uh, 
aesthetically right about it that there is we and things can only there cannot be something else which is uh, which carries a n can appear only in the power so in that case the way to look at this is that you have to exponentiate it and write it as 1 plus something to the power n so that's the other uh, uh, so effectively the whole series has when you get it has to be exponentiated so that the see there can't be it has to be 3n by 2 and then it has to be v to the power um, <clears throat> n so there cannot be uh, anything else over here except some number raised to the power n uh, which is like 2 pi m over h square. It's t to the power 3n by 2, it is v to the power n, and thereafter it can only be numbers to the power n. And therefore, the thing is, what you realize is that this term has to be 1 plus 2 pi by 3 number density coupling constant v0 this r0 cube to make things dimensionless. So this is one over volume, volume, and then this is raised to the power n, which is quite all right. This is a infinitesimal quantity. This is being raised to the power n. And therefore, uh, aesthetically, everything is all right. So the, the, these are all um, uh, issues which, uh, I mean, in future, for those of you who would be doing calculations of this kind, there would always come issues which have to do with extensivity, inten extensive quantity, intensive quantity, and things like that. And you always have to be uh, clear that you have got it right. So uh, here we are, we raised a little more than I should have. And then it is uh, 1 plus uh, 2 pi over 3 uh, n square by v. And I have a, a r0 cube and a v0 over kt. Very good. So that's my z. My attitude right now is uh, fine. I mean, this is my z. Uh, that is not a physical quantity. Let me go ahead and calculate a physical quantity. So what's a physical quantity? Well, physical quantity is what I'm interested in, the pressure. So, but it is reached through uh, some more um, uh, uh, auxiliary steps which are not particularly uh, calculating physical quantities. So F, the free energy, uh, which is minus kT log Z, again, something which you don't directly measure. So this is uh, 3n over 2 log t plus n log v. There is a log constant. There is some constant which will I'll write at the end. And then is log of 1 plus uh, this quantity over here plus some constant c. So f is equal to um, uh, this quantity over here, uh, e equal to a n log b plus log of this, minus kt, 3n by 2 log t plus n log v plus log. And now I'm going to uh, uh, consider the, this term as small and keep the first term 2 pi over 3 n square by v r0 cubed v0 over two plus this plus constant. So this is the free energy. The free energy is E minus Ts. So df is equal to de minus tds minus sdt, which is equal to minus sdt minus pdv. And finally, I have my uh, physical quantity, which is f equal to minus del f del v at constant t. So del f del v at constant t. So you have kt over here. 
taking a V that goes out, it is N over V over here. And then it is this term, V is only over here. And uh, I have minus two pi over three N square over V square R zero cubed V zero KT plus so on. And there you are. Everything, as soon as I calculate a physical quantity, I get it absolutely right as in de pressure intensive N over V over here, N square over V square over here, and so on and so forth. So that is, I mean, if you do it right, then at the end of the day, you will get it right. And that is what um, has worked out. I've got the pressure. The pressure is uh, uh, what we have got over here. And therefore now, what do I know? What I know is the pressure of this gas. So this pressure of my real gas is P, which is equal to NKT over V minus B. That is the part which I calculated out uh, the correction due to the uh, repulsive um, uh, force. And uh, then I have this pressure over here, which is minus, which is minus, and the KT cancels the uh, KT over there, and it is 2 pi, 2 pi by 3, and it is N squared. There is no T, which is the important point. Uh, so uh, R, uh, R zero cube V zero, and uh, I have uh, N square. So that is P equal to uh, uh, N. And if I expand this, then it is N times KT. And the next term is, as we had written down before, um, it is NKT and V and then plus B over V, which is N squared. So what was this? NKT over V1 plus uh, B over V and so on. So it is NKT on, on, uh, over uh, V, the B, is I mean, B is proportional to uh, N in order to, so B is actually some B0 times N, and so B0 times N, and then this is B0 and uh, KT, so N squared, so KT is common, B0, N squared, um, uh, KT, uh, KT, and now I have this, what happened to my KT? That can, uh, oh yeah, right, it canceled out because the V0, were, uh, V0 is there. So NKT plus N squared V0 KT minus 2 pi by 3 R0 cubed V0 N squared. So I have got all the N squared terms and So P is expanded like this and you have got, so point number one, Van der Waals equation of state, is P plus A over V squared into V minus B is equal to NKT. A obviously is some A0 times N squared. B is equal to some B0 times N. 
uh, intensive, extensive business has to be always maintained. And therefore, the pressure is NKT over uh, B minus B minus A over B square. And A0, so this is, uh, as you can uh, uh, see over here, uh, uh, B, uh, B is, so you want to expand, uh, this is NKT over uh, V uh, minus B0, N minus A0, N square over V square, which is equal to N kt over v and then it is 1 plus b0 n by v higher order terms minus a0 n square over v square which is equal to n kt over v which is n kt plus as you can see uh, b0 uh, kt and then it is n square minus a zero n square. So what you have got is essentially, look at this over here, all that I need to do is call this, I mean, uh, uh, the um, uh, a zero, the n square coefficient is what, um, so what I have done, here is Van der Waals equation phenomenologically written down, from the fact simply that there is going to be uh, extruded volume and the pressure is going to uh, bring in uh, and the pressure is going to um, uh, bring in a uh, 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 negative uh, uh, contribution and uh, the correction to the uh, pressure would have to be uh, uh, po uh, positive so that, I mean, you can take away uh, this um, uh, repulsive force over there. So the repulsive force is taken away from the gas pressure uh, over there. So that's this minus A over V square. And the I do a calculation which is pretty basic and still it has the right structure as the van, as van der Waals equation. And why is it important that why is van der Waals equation so good? The point is that you see it makes a tremendous prediction. It says that start doing experiments with real gases. So do experiments with this is exactly what van der Waals did do experiments with real gases and find the PV curve. So fi find the uh, uh, PV curve. And the point is that if you do that, then uh, uh, by, um, uh, 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 for a fixed number of molecules, you make the volume smaller, the gas becomes more and more dense, and you find that initially there is a <coughs> an, an, uh, the behavior is like NKT. So P is equal to NKT for the dilute gas. And then you start picking up the correction which are proportional to N squared. That by itself is not sufficiently strong uh, indication experimentally that you have done a good job. The point over here is that there is a zero of the coefficient of n square as a function of temperature. The coefficient changes. As I lower the temperature, there is going to be a change in sign over here. That uh, was the clincher. Van der Waals expansion, Van der Waals experiment clearly showed that his equation had got the n square right. 
because if you did it at different temperatures, you could find the temperature at which the sine of n squared changed. So that is the non-trivial part. So the sign change over here, lower the temperature, at low temperatures, this contribution is going to become a negative contribution. And that is where the, um, uh, that, that, that is why uh, Van der Waals equation is very important and completely non-trivial. And therefore, I mean, by that same token, uh, the more or less trivial calculate expansion that we have done over here gets you the same answer, gets you the zero. We have done this, this is the answer that we have. And sure, the n squared coefficient has a, um, a change of sign at low temperatures, just as the phenomenological uh, Van der Waals equation does. So you have it. I mean, a uh, calculation which can be done on the board can pick up this vital and, uh, effect. And therefore, these, expand, they, these perturbation expansions always remain a useful tool. So this is, uh, I mean, th this is uh, for you uh, uh, very important to um, uh, get in uh, uh, your sort of thinking process that if you can pick up the right parameter for expansion, then a perturbation expansion is a good thing, no matter what. The right parameter over here was the density. So density was the thing in which you had to expand. You expand it in powers of density, and you do can get a meaningful uh, answer. So perturbation theory remains uh, uh, would always remain a useful tool if you know <coughs> what to perturb in. That's the. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, I mean, you can go home and think about it. It's a purely non-trivial answer obtained from some trivial manipulation. So that's the, but now this equation, which is Van der Waals, what Van der Waals wrote down, and uh, when expanded has this, uh, tested it out experimentally by doing these uh, uh, pressure volume curves at different temperatures, yielded something which was far more problematic. The isotherms look like this at high temperature, but <clears throat> then at low temperatures, the, uh, so you uh, start with a gas and at high temperature, you do a PV curve and you get something which looks like this, fine. But if you now lower the temperature, the gas may become a liquid. So if you lower the temperature and uh, 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 keep on applying pressure, the gas may become a liquid and at low temperatures, that's exactly what it does. And then thereafter, it uh, holds the pressure fixed while all of it gets converted to the liquid. And then this is a far steeper. Uh, the drawing doesn't show that, but the changes, uh, uh, ch small change in pressure over here is going to produce a, a, a large change, produces much smaller change in volume. So it's sort of essentially. Uh, anyway. 
So there is going to be, I mean, here is a temperature much lower than that temperature. And then if I lower the, if I uh, uh, in, uh, 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 change the uh, pressure over here, uh, you are going to see uh, the thing become, I mean, uh, that is increase the pressure over here. So you increase the pressure over here. Uh, it uh, starts becoming going from a gas phase to a liquid phase, and now it goes up. So here is a liquid phase. So this is where the transition was taking place. And now <clears throat> you have hardly any change in pressure, unlike this curve over here. This is going up very steeply, and uh, this, uh, all right. But now what about the sequencing? I want to change, so I go to a little higher temperature. This is at a low temperature T1. I go to a little higher temperature. And what happens is that you have a smaller flat region. So this is T2. And then at some temperature, this flat region disappears. And thereafter, it all sort of looks like this. So, <clears throat> This is what actually come, uh, 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 the, uh, is, uh, this is actually the result of, an ex of experiments. And what you find is that right over here, this coexistence region <coughs> is actually going down to zero. So here is a change of state of a different kind. It is something which is happening continuously. The change of state which happened over here, you were a liquid on this side and you became a gas on this side, happened slowly, I, I mean, happened with a discontinuity <clears throat> as you changed your volume over here, um, uh, there wasn't any uh, change in the pressure until, I mean, uh, after a point, it sort of started responding. But come over here, the system is going to be extremely problematic that it is, it does not know, I mean, whether it is a uh, liquid, here it is a clear-cut liquid, here it is a clear-cut gas, and then this region which separates the liquid and gas becomes smaller and smaller, and right here the system does not know whether it is a liquid or gas, and thereafter it is all one phase. You can call it a gas, you can call it a liquid, call it what you will, uh, but the point is there is just one phase sitting over here. So here is a different kind of transition. It is a transition which you can bring, uh, uh, bring about by changing this temperature and what you are doing is changing the, if you are looking at temperature greater than Tc, then you just see a one phase region. I mean, which is a mixture somewhere across between a uh, gas and a liquid. And T less than Tc, 
you have to i mean somewhat down here a little little ways away from tc uh, you have a clear cut over here at temperature but things are going, it, it is if i focus on this part alone so i draw this sort of blown up here is this pc that's the uh vc and here it is so <clears throat> here uh, uh, that that's the uh, critical isotherm so these are your isotherms and that is the uh, the curves that we have drawn uh, fixed temperature and uh, changing the pressure here is the critical isotherm which you see over there above it it is just one phase region and below it there is a two phase region but the two phase region if t minus tc is very small delta t uh, that's uh, let's say the magnitude of tc minus t positive if you are here negative if you are there then the point is that this if you are very close to this how close let's say your tc is like uh some uh, 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 300 or 400 degree kelvin so my tc let's say uh is of the order of let's say 400 degree kelvin and how small what do i mean by being very close to tc what i mean by being very close to tc is delta t which is the magnitude of t minus tc is something of the order of milli kelvin that is what i mean by uh, being uh, 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 small so it is something which is of the this difference is of the so infinitesimally close if you are infinitesimally close to this then your system wouldn't know whether you are a liquid or a solid a liquid or a gas so the in the immediate vicinity of this the whole idea then is that there is going to be if you are going to take a microscopic uh, picture of this as suppose you could look at the uh, small bits of this uh, gas uh, or liquid whatever you may have call it you see the point is that up over here it is just a one phase region so it's like a one phase region over here below it is like essentially uh, slightly below a preponderance uh, 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 of let's say uh, the um, uh, liquid phase so there is uh, some uh, uh, transition has happened there is uh, two distinct phases but uh, you can't sort of make out i mean the which part is a liquid which part is a gas coexisting liquid and gas you can't quite make out very close over here which is because if you look at any particular region uh, there is a large fluctuation you see that in this little bit over here it's a gas at uh, um, uh, uh, in this bit there uh, more gas like over here look at the neighbor it is more liquid like and then similarly i mean randomly 
something is more liquid like something is more gas like and this picture over here which right here it would be like a clear cut gas liquid coexistence so gas liquid coexistence you look at some part of your container is a gas other part and you have this uh, 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 coexisting phases but over here, the coexisting phases are going, I mean, it is hardly possible to tell the difference between them. The density between them is very small. It is like the density difference, delta rho, what one is talking about is delta rho over delta C is, let's say, of the order of 10 to the power minus 3. So that is the kind of difference one is talking about. So this system would be determined, would be dominated by fluctuations, that there would be fluctuations in that there is gas over here, liquid over here. If you do look at it a little later, this may be liquid and this may be gas and so on. So fluctuating spontaneously from one phase to another, because that is what the uh, situation over here is, that you are just sort of sitting on the edge and don't quite know where to go. So this part over here is going to be dominated by uh, fluctuations. And how do you test it? Well, what you do to test it is that you pass light through it. So you pass light through this. When it is a clear cut gas, let's say over here, the light just passes through. So here is this gas over here. I have a, 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 a room like this. I shine light over there. The light just passes through. I mean, there, and if on the other hand, if I'm going to sit over here, if I make this room sort of uh, the temperature very close to the uh, critical point of air, then what is going to happen is that there is going to be a uh, lot of scattering of light because the density changes from one point to another. Here it is all uniform density. There is no scattering because of the density changes. But here there are density changes occurring continuously. And therefore, there is going to be a huge amount of scattering of light in the vicinity of this critical point. So the light, the mixture, so the light is all scattered off. And therefore, what you see is the mixture, the liquid becomes turbid. So you will see when one looks at this, uh, if you look at the literature, a very common word for the liquid gas, uh, uh, very, very common word which is used in the liquid gas critical point description is turbidity. The mix, the, because of the scattering of light, what was a transparent, nice transparent liquid is now looking like a sort of hazy thing. So that is what the um, uh, critical point does for you. It is measure. It, it is probed through the scattering, light scattering in liquids, neutron scattering in magnets, and whatever is the right kind of scattering experiment for the material concerned. If you are going to probe this, you are going to probe it by uh, light. So response. Responses are the thing that responds very strongly to uh, uh, this um, uh, light uh, probe of light. There is something else which it would be responding to very strongly, which is if I were to look at the del V, the susceptibility. So I change the pressure slightly, and how much would the volume change? Up over here, del P del V is going to be, I mean, uh, uh, some number. 
nothing much uh, is uh, going on over there. I mean, it's going to be some standard number, some slope which come. But come over here, it is a turning point in this PV curve. So there is a turning point in this curve over here, and therefore you are going to have a huge amount of response, the del V del P becomes infinitely big at this point over here. You change the pressure ever so slightly and the volume can change by a large amount. That's, the, that's once again this question of fluctuation over here, it's very susceptible to things with small probes. You probe it by slightly changing the pressure the system responds by each other, uh, it, uh, the volume or density, which is what is the important issue. I mean, you uh, uh, really do uh, density, which is like the volume. So uh, when I talk about uh, uh, volume, it is like talking about the density. So you change the pressure slightly and the density changes wildly. It is sometimes the density of the liquid, sometimes the density of the gas, and it just doesn't know uh, what it should be um, uh, looking at. And therefore, a small change induces a large change over here and the susceptibility because, and this at constant temperature, at constant temperature, isothermal susceptibility that blows up. So the isothermal susceptibility blows up. The light scattering is huge. If you learn, uh, the light scattering actually is proportional to the uh, susceptibility. And therefore, I mean, uh, it's not uh, surprising that uh, the one uh, of them big. The thing we would be probing is the susceptibility. So the susceptibility of this is going to be very large. And uh, the, uh, that so critical point characterized by huge susceptibility, huge um, uh, amount of uh, light scattering. And in the so-called ordered phase, uh, coexistence curve, which is going to be somewhat funny. So right down over here, it is a coexistence curve. So delta rho as a function of, um, uh, so if I look at uh, rho over here, it's a function of pressure. There are these, I mean, uh, uh, for any, there are two coexisting uh, volumes, but it is going to be in this way region over here, it is going to be non-analytic. It is going to be a strange behavior of how the, at a given pressure line, the two volumes that you see are not, are related in a very strange manner. So the coexistence curve is funny. The, um, uh, fluctuations are large and so on and so forth. So that is what started out the critical uh, phenomena business uh, way back in 1870s and 80s. And so the next class, what we are going to see that what does, how does uh, Van der Waals uh, equation lead to the uh, critical behavior? What does it say about the coexistence region? What does it say about the susceptibility and things like that? So, and uh, why they don't, uh, uh, how they disagree with uh, uh, the more sophisticated experiments which were to follow uh, 50 years later and uh, thereafter. So the point, uh, next class uh, would be on all about this. So, all right, um, uh, to conclude, let's come back to what I started with, that the routine shows two hours.